first thing I'd like to say is that this is, I want to congratulate Rebecca and Nicola for this fantastic book. Um, it does a number of important things, but one of the things that I think it does very well is to focus on the evidence and to focus on the evidence to test assumptions about the transformative potential of social protection at different levels. And I think that's something that is very needed in the literature and that um, this contributes to the knowledge about what works and what might not work so well and moving away from more normative prescriptive assumptions to let's really unpack what what this empowering potential of social protection can look like in at different levels. And then I it comes up with a very important um, message of the need to integrate a gender lens much more effectively in program design and implementation structure at different levels and how this can be this can come about so it comes up with very practical um, recommendations for policy makers that hopefully will begin to inform um, policy makers that 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 have access to decisions about design um, I'm not going to talk that much about um, the book itself other than how it contributes to some of the things that I, I will talk a little bit about and that's essentially about how it contributes also to wider discussions about empowerment and agency. So the question is, does social protection contribute to empowerment? How does it alter gender relations at the different levels in which social protection has impact, at the micro level, at the inter-household level, also at the meso level in, in relation to how women engage locally and in the social space that they inhabit? Um, but also, to what extent does this lead to transformative impact or how it contributes to wider political and social voice beyond these two levels and to agency for women and gender equalities more broadly. And there, there are dilemmas, trade-offs, contradictions that come up that are very well reflected, I think, in the book about sometimes actually social protect, some of the way in which social protection is designed is that it can in fact contribute to reinforming, reinforcing dominant narratives about uh, traditional gender roles and so it, they can, uh, that, that adds to the barriers to more effective agency for gender equality. But even if this is the case, the changes that come about as a result of social protection policies can contribute to rebalancing resource and power allocation at these, at the micro and uh, meso level in ways that do fit and can feed into incremental, maybe insufficiently speedy perceptions of alteration in gender relations. But I think um, the way that the book talks about this is very effective in how it um, asks the questions about the connection between resources, agency, and transformational outcomes. And asks the question also about, um, or and, I th and I think it raises the question as to whether already it is important, how important and to what extent it's important to ensure that the gender lens is embedded from the beginning in program design on um, on social protection. How important is it for progressive voices to have already accessed decision-making forms and implementation structures in relation to um, how these policies uh, operate in practice? So what comes first then? And that's the big question on the empower in the empowerment um, li literature, and I th uh, which is also relates to uh, what Jan was talking about. Do you need progressive voice and agency to be in place or does that get empowered by the transformational processes that policies like social protection and others that contribute to altering economic power relations in gender contribute to enhancing the possibility of women in the, uh, being able to access decision-making forums to ensure that these progressive voices impact decision-making. And so, in fact, the reality is that life is very messy in that what we find and observe is incremental, complex incremental iterative processes which are full of contradictions, tensions, sometimes trade-offs, trade-offs also that need to be um, considered in how policy design is negotiated politically. Um, and here I think one of what one of the book does that's very effective is to shift the discussion away from what often are very siloized discussions about different policy areas um, 
and how it does this is through a chapter that I really recommend everybody to read, which is chapter seven on the political economy of, um, of gender responsive policies and policy making and the need to assess, evaluate and address these, these policies from the perspective of, of, uh, of a, pol a political economy understanding that enables us to disaggregate the dynamics of structural agency at different levels and that can capture precisely this very complex multidimensionality of empowerment where we can look at the interface between the kind of economic autonomy that social protection measures can um, unleash um, with um, uh, the question of political voice and agency and being able to access decision-making roles and how this in turn interacts with changes which may be slower or faster in, in social norms and beliefs about, about gender relations. And furthermore, this political economy perspective that the book looks at is regarding the need to disaggregate this at the different levels that are, that are identified at the macro, meso, at the me micro, meso and macro level. And, 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 at a, and also across different spheres of decision making and norm setting, I think that's what that chapter captures extremely well where we need to understand what's going on among policy makers, how they're thinking about the transformative goals that they intend should be part of some of these policies, but also at the in relation to how implementers are thinking about this and, and how they themselves are being transformed. And in those spaces that also offer opportunities for redress claims and oversight to be activated of the way in which these policies are, uh, are being implemented. So those, I think, are great achievements of the book, and um, they contribute to addressing some of the gaps in the literature in being able to speak across different empowerment literatures um, that, to my mind, still remain in many respects very siloized. Um, and I think I'll leave it there. Okay. Yeah. Thank, thank, thank you very much indeed for...